Um, so it, it was actually a decision that was uh, taken a while ago. We, uh, we knew that we needed to um, launch a new site to support our customers uh, in the U.S. market in Canada. And we started doing some research two years ago around the, the possible options. Um, we already have a footprint in um, Jamaica, in Europe, in North Africa. And uh, we knew that Asia, Southeast Asia, could potentially um, host a new site. And we were specifically attracted to the Philippines for the availability at skills, of skills at uh, competitive costs. Um, so we started doing a couple of scouting trips. Um, we met uh, different uh, businesses operating already here. We met government officials. And um, the foundations are strong. So our decision was made. And we stepped into the country. We were not really concerned with the outcome of the elections. Well, Radwin, let's talk about that because, I mean, you talk about the U.S. and North American clients. I mean, we have a chart here that basically shows that, you know, eight out of ten BPO job services, you know, U.S. companies. Was this, is this a pain point for you going forward as, you know, the Trump presidency uh, finds its legs? Um, no. So I, um, I'm quite, well, personally, I'm a little bit resilient to that. So I'm Tunisian. I used to run the Simpress site in Tunis during the revolution. So we saw a lot of companies there, a lot of investors in that period of transition start saying that they were going to delay investments because they still needed to see what's going to happen with the constitution, with the new government, with the new budget law, and they kept on delaying and procrastinating. What we did was just carry on. I mean, we were seeing, obviously, that there were some negative impacts on the economy, but as an export-driven uh, market, like a, a company, the devaluation was actually playing in our favor. Our costs were going down, so why delay? And we knew again that, you know, uh, quoting Obama, um, no matter what happens tomorrow, uh, the sun will rise in the morning. So unless you're really facing a situation of war or you know, pandemic or whatever, like, the fundamentals are there and uh, it shouldn't really uh, delay decisions. Now you seem to think a long-term horizon given all these risks. Now, you started off with 60 jobs in your office. Your plan, according to your press release in your website, is 1,700 jobs in Metro Manila within the next five years. Has that changed any with these new developments? What are your plans on your footprint going forward? So we have different scenarios on how our business could grow. And it could go to 1,000 in five years, and it can go to 2,000 in five years. Um, this will depend on a variety of things, which are not specifically linked to the environment in the Philippines. It's uh, the uh, level of adoption of our products by our customers, whether they like what we're doing, and uh, whether we're going to be attracting more customers. Um, but what we're seeing so far is that we're growing faster than what we had planned. Um, we started our operations in May. Our first class joined us in May in training. And we were supposed to be around 130 employees in December. Right now, we're 220. And by the end of December, we'll be 250. Um, so we're growing faster than what we had expected. Why? The performance is awesome. And the market is favorable. Like maybe because other investors are thinking a little bit about whether they want to move in now or we find it easy to recruit and our people stay and they perform. Now, speaking of moving in, I mean, you're a bellwether for others, given the fact that you're NASDAQ listed. Plus, your services here are both design support and customer service. So that looks like a microcosm of what people want. Question I have here is, when you look in the Philippines, were there any constraints and challenges in terms of relocation, permitting and whatnot? And how did you overcome them? So we, we chose to work within the PESA environment, and PESA has been great. They've provided a lot of support. They, they try to make things easy for us. There's still a little bit of work that you need to do and, and make sure that you have the right partners in terms of a law firm, an accounting firm, etc., to avoid making mistakes. Um, and so far, so good. We're, um, we're, on the, we're still on track versus our business plan, and we haven't met serious hurdles. And finally, expansion plans. I mean, you look at Metro Manila, and at the same time, you're also looking at you know, other functions. Are you going beyond one unit like Vistaprint, or are you going beyond other clients? So we're, we're looking at uh, different options. When we were exploring the option of the Philippines, we actually visited other locations beyond Manila. So we, we've been to Cebu, we've been to Clark, and we uh, started also collecting information about what's, what's possible to do in uh, Iloilo. So th there's definitely today a uh, mindset whereby we're looking at expanding our operations in the Philippines and going maybe beyond Manila. So I hear an affirmation of confidence in long-term operations. Radwin Takaya, thank you so much. General Manager of Simpress Philippines. Thank you.